you have more veteran wide receivers than you have veteran tight ends? Don't yell at me. I'm not. No, I don't yell at you. <laughs> you want some ice cream? For no. Your, for your for wings? My, yeah, no. No. Good God. Did you eat them all? No. Of course I didn't eat them all. What? It's part of the bet. I had to eat them all? You jerk. Yes, of course you got to eat them all. Jeez. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Jesus, that sounds the same as the last one. Um, Nothing. I, th I think tight end is fascinating now because they had a blueprint, but I mean, just kiss that all goodbye, Tyler Croft's injury. Did they really? Well, I think they were gonna depend on Croft a little bit, but here's why I think that tight end is again, not a focus for Dable and why the Tyler Croft injury really doesn't hurt the Bills that much. So you it lose Tyler Croft. It doesn't hurt that much. So you lose Tyler Croft, which of course hurts, right? Will you stop saying hurts? Well, it's not Jalen. So the impact of Tyler Croft missing him is not going to be as impactful as... Um, I never gave it a second thought. Like, what, losing, losing Croft? No. See, I like the Croft signing because I think he brings enough of what you want to do. Can, right? I, can, I, can, I, take, can I take your... your I keep cutting you off. It's all right. Can I take a page out of your book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, it's never good when you use this word. Mm. Fine. Oh, yeah. Because you pause so hard before you say it. You're like, he's fine, right? He'll be fine. Croft, to me, signing, it's fine. <laughs> you have to uh, emphasize the F so much. But that's what you do. I, I never gave it a second thought. Like, okay, they got a receiving threat. He does a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was an insurance policy. What do they end up doing? They end up drafting two more. Right. So, yeah. uh, okay. But here's why I don't think the loss of the tight end position in Croft is really that big a deal. One, we know that Dable's history doesn't feature the tight end anyway. Right, because you just reinvented that room. So you've gone in and replaced. You basically reinvented that whole room. You have Kroom, who's really a, a wide receiver, right? He's your returning player, and then outside of that, you have Lee Smith, who's never worked with this coaching staff before. He left before McDermott came in. He's again your blocking and now veteran tight end. You have Knox. You have some other guys, but the truth is that tight ends take a while to develop in the NFL because you have to know how to run routes as a receiver which it takes receivers a couple years to develop anyway and you have to be able to take on these blitz concepts mm -hmm. you have to understand your role so there's a lot to pick up from an NFL level so the reason that it doesn't bother me that you lost Croft was because you weren't going to depend on the tight end position anyway I think Beasley allows you to take a flyer on your tight end position this year and just take this year to develop. You're not super concerned about the tight end position right now because mm -mm. you've added Beasley and Beasley's going to replace that production. Mm -hmm. To me, he's the replacement. Oh, what? The Clay, Clay's 21 catches? He's going to replace that? Phenomenal. It's hard. I know. It's hard. hard it's a, you know, a tall hurdle. I could have job. 15 catches this year playing for the Bills. They'd all have to be screens, but I could have 15 catches. <laughs> do, do, if they go for positive yardage, does this I, catch I still would, count? I would join Reggie Bush in negative <laughs> yardage. In the I know, we, we highlighted that a long time ago when you looked up all of the, the tight ends that Dable had over his career. Yeah. Why would you feature any of those guys? Right. So he didn't have the horses. Right. That's what bothered me about him as being an offensive coordinator was you still got to you still gotta do it. You still got to make it happen if you don't have the horses. Right. All right, so he didn't have horse. So what do you do? He didn't really have amazing wide receivers either. Okay, he didn't have amazing quarterbacks. Okay, still well, yeah, got to get excuse the, after excuse. Skill, after excuse. I know, still got to get the job done. I, I'm never giving him an excuse for that. And this is why we're, we always hammer him, and everyone always touts him. And people were talking about him possibly getting a head coaching job. I know he had nothing to work with the carousel of, of quarterbacks last year. However, in his mindset, it's so ironic that he came from New England, was a tight ends coach. And still doesn't use the tight end. Does he just not like the tight end? Does he want to just be more, hey, I'm going to create my own offense that never has a tight end or a fullback? 
Um, but if you look at the tight ends that are currently on the Bills, all of them play special teams. Yeah. That's yeah. that's why you have the tight end position in, in that respect. Okay? Sweeney, if he makes it, can do it. Kroom can do it. Knox can do it. Uh, Croft, when he comes back, he can do it. But I never thought it was a big deal anyway that they were going to use the tight ends because he never did anyway. Could you feature those guys? Yes. Could you feature Kroom? You could try to do a matchup. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's not a, a matchup deal. problem. It's it's not yeah, it's not an issue. The reason I like Croft was because he didn't tip your hand to what you were doing, right? Yes, yes. That's why I liked the signing of Croft because okay, well, it could be run set, could be pass set. You don't know. He's a great play action player because again, he can do whatever you need. And the Bills are now without that a little bit because you have Lee Smith, who again, I mean, probably has as many career catches as Marcus Easley. Um, Did Smith get signed after they lost Croft? No, I don't think so. I think Smith came in before the Croft injury. I will confirm that, but okay, I thought that looking, happened. It was re- they were real close. While you're looking that up, this is, one, this is the only option that I like with the Croft signing. Say you're going into a you're going into a game. You want to go a lot of four wide sets, but with receivers, four receivers, five linemen. Right. Your running backs having trouble chipping and, and getting pressure off of Allen. What do you do? You take a you take a wide receiver out. You put Croft in just to try to give the guy extend the time that he's going to take to get to your quarterback, and you have the running back chip on the other side. So you're having six protect. All right, right. and then you get three, and you know, actually no, you're going to have seven protect, mm-hmm. and you have three in the route. Yeah. So that from that aspect, I liked it. like hey, listen, they're getting a little too much pressure. Let's go, let's go eleven personnel. Yeah, he was signed so, a week. He was signed a week before the Croft injury. Maybe they knew. Anyway. He broke his foot. I, don't, I know. I'm just kidding. But that's the only reason I like the Croft signing. Because Kroom wasn't doing that for you. He right. wasn't extending any kind of no. plays by blocking or letting the defensive end go a little wide or leaking right. out in the flat. Right. Uh, Those savvy tight end things, Kroom doesn't do yet. No, not yet. Not yet. But um, you got to think they were trying to go a lot of four wide this year. Yeah. And if they were having trouble and, and there was a lot of pressure getting on Allen... Then okay, all right, we gotta exchange the wide receiver with the tight end. But but again, you look at what your signings were in the off season, and we just talked. We did an episode last week where we talked about carrying seven wide receivers. Well, if you're carrying seven wide receivers, it means you're carrying two tight ends, three running backs, or two tight ends. Take your pick. What are you doing? What which ones are you carrying here? Right. That's what that's you what can, happens. You carry three tight ends. You still, but it's it becomes a numbers game, right? It becomes a numbers game with special teams. That's why you have hybrid defensive players. <laughs> <laughs> sure, an argument could be made for that. The point that I'm trying to get to, Mar, is that mm-hmm. you lose Croft, fine, right? Well, now you have Lee Smith, who's probably going to make the team. He is in for run blocking sets. But if you're looking at what the Bills acquired in the off season. There's an argument to be made for the Bills carrying seven wide receivers. Absolutely. What does that tell you? They're not going to carry seven wide receivers to only run two and three wide sets. They're not. They're, I understand that. So the tight end position is mute. It's it's a moot point. There's no what, no reason to have it. There's no reason to even have it. You're you're putting a tight end in on three receiver sets, which is not using if they carry seven wide receivers. More than half your wide receiver course sitting on the sidelines. You know, like it's just. It, there, there's something to be said about chemistry, right? With mm-hmm. a wide receiver and a quarterback, how hard is it to build chemistry when you got seven guys to feed the ball to, just in the wide receiver room, right? That's a lot. Well, I think that's a lot. I think they're going to be asked to do vastly different things. I think Roberts, McLeod, and McKenzie aren't. They're going to have to work on their timing with the jet sweeps mm-hmm. and little screen plays and little jet, you know, little arrow routes and all other stuff. That's that's the main. You work on what you think that player is going to be running the most. Right. Okay? You're working on deep ball at Foster and Brown today? Sweet. You're working on those little whip routes with, with Beasley, maybe Jones, and maybe Williams. You're going up for contested catches with Williams and Kroom. Or, you know, you're doing all this other stuff. That's I think that's the initial chemistry you got. you got to get those plays down initially. And then, hey, all right, McKenzie's not usually used to running an eight-yard slant. And his eight-yard slant is different than Duke Williams' eight-yard right. slant, which is different than Zay Jones' eight-yard slant. Right. That's the chemistry that you talk about having to build that's, that's always so tough. But I think initially what you do is you just get the guys the plays that they're going to run the most, and you try to, to get that timing down right now so that you don't even have to think about it when you go. Right. How many tight ends do you 
see the Bills carrying on game day. On game now day? the roster on three. game day. Three. Because yeah, I, I think they'll all play special teams. I agree with that. And that yeah. supplement that supplements your running backs. So the five running backs you had last year mm -hmm. that played special teams. The four of them play special teams. Oh man, this leads us into a totally different conversation, but I think it's a reasonable conversation to have. Okay, so we talked in our Devin Single Terry episode or somewhere. Um, we talked about Single Terry in college, ran primarily his own concepts, right? Oh, and did boy. a lot out of shotgun and a lot of draws, right? Did a lot there. So if you're worried about the Bills generating in the run game, I think that's reasonable. But four wide out of shotgun with a running back at your side now becomes reasonable, right? Because, yeah. again, you don't have the tight end depth. You don't want to tip that you're running the ball. But the Bills are going to generate some rushes this season out of a set like that. That, yes. they, that they couldn't do last year. Oh, yeah. They couldn't do last year. Spread them think, out. And I think that's a great thing for McCoy. And it's an even better thing for Singletary because that's the look that he got most in college. So if you're seeing, if you're looking at Singletary in that set, expect him to touch the football. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, it's what it is. That's what it is. That's the set that he ran in college most often was out of shotgun next to the quarterback, taking that handoff and going out of a four wide set. So that, that's pretty, that was pretty common. Um, but if you're talking about depth at the tight end position being a problem, and you don't want to tip your hand to when you're running the football because, honestly, you put a tight end in the game and it's Lee Smith, everybody's going to go, run. <laughs> right? It makes it obvious. Mm. Remember when C.J. Spiller was on the team his last two years? It was like Spiller's on the field. Just uh, Why do you keep soiling my vehicle with that name? I just keep bringing it up because it's it's something that happened. Every time Spiller was on the field, they're like, watch Spiller. He got the ball 70% of the time he was on the field. Yeah. So it was obvious when, when it was... 70% of the time he was on the field, they were down by 17 or more points. That's true. That's also true. That's a fair point. Oh, he had a 20-yard run. Let me do this in the first half because you weren't down 21 points. Yeah, exactly. And they weren't conceding a run. Exactly, because they had, they had six guys in the box. That's, that's why. I know, but I, to your point, it's, it's, it definitely brings up... If you're running a four-wide set, you got one running back. It definitely opens up some holes for the running back because you're spreading guys out. Also, what did they do last year when they went five wide? They were in a Josh Allen draw. Right. So you got right. guys spread out. If they're playing zone or man, you, you got to, Allen, you got to beat one guy. Mm -hmm. We got we got all the linemen, the four linemen blocked. You got to beat the linebacker. And yep. we're going to have a we're going to have a one lineman free to do whatever he wants to do. Right, but the the lack of depth at the tight end position and the lack of experience at the tight end position are going to force the Bills into sets like that. Well, it's not like you have much more experience at the receiver position either. That's that's a good point to make. That's a fair point to make. What do we do at tight end? Nothing. I, nothing? See you later. <laughs> Another great episode. Thanks for tuning in.